Hi, everyone. Welcome to Terry TV. Listen, today is a pre recorded message because uh, I have a meeting and I have a drawing deadline. So um, I'm illustrating a book and uh, I have to get the drawings together as a few other things. This has been like a series of Mondays, five days in a row. Every day, I think I'm starting going to start something different or it might just rest a little bit. Uh, it explodes into a Monday of things that have to get done. So today is one of those days. I also have a meeting. I think I said I had a meeting anyway. <laughs> but welcome to Terry TV, Terry Harden, uh, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer and pop icon. And today, uh, I just wanted to talk quickly to you about a couple of things. First of all, about uh, a film that surprised me. So as of Wednesday, uh, because I belong to the Screen Actors Guild, I'm starting to get digital films and movies, well, films and TV, that I am supposed to vote on. And I started to look at quite a few things. And the Barbie movie, given, really good. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. Margot Robbie is amazing. But what's really amazing is how this movie was made. The director is fantastic. The cast is incredible. And it's just a joyful, fun movie. So if you're someone who has heard of Barbie and... Uh, I think that's just about everybody. I worked for Mattel for three years and uh, Barbie was a major part of my life at that point. And then back in the day, I had one of the first Barbies, but just like most girls, uh, young girls, mine was played to into the dust, but it's a good movie. But that was not the movie. That's not the movie I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, being very, very surprised and pleasantly so was the color purple, which I put on last night while working on one of my deadlines. And uh, it's very, it really made me stop and watch it. And I was quite surprised because the original color purple is a little challenging for me to to uh, watch. It's an excellent movie. Whoopi Goldberg and Oprah Winifrey uh, do an amazing job. Academy Awards were won, of course, back then. And now um, this one is nominated for, uh, I think at least, well, a couple of Screen Actors Guild Awards. So the Screen Actors Guild, of course, is the union that uh, actors are under, myself included. And it's got a Best Supporting Actress nomination, and it also has Best Cast. Best Cast. <laughs> and it really surprised me because um, it said it was a musical, and musicals are hit and miss with me. And, uh, but I had to watch it. I try to watch every single thing that is nominated, although sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. And this really was a pleasant surprise. It's got some amazing acting. What's really lovely is the cinematography and the costuming and the filming. And, um, it's got some good stuff in it. It really is a good stuff. I don't understand why the lead wasn't nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award. She was very, very compelling and very, very, very hard to take your eyes off of. She just had this sort of masculinity to her and uh, strength that uh, came across uh, the uh, threshold of the screen uh, without, you know, with, with quite, I mean, she did such a great job. It was easy to attach yourself to her and like her. And that's not because of incidents that happened in the color purple. Of course, that's part of it, but just lots of stuff. And then you can see as the young sister of hers, the amazing little mermaid that was in the live action little mermaid. So uh, highly recommended. Just wanted to give you a shout. You guys know who the names are. You're better with names than I am. But both uh, movies were, this movie was very, very surprising. Now I said both movies and you're probably wondering both movies. The other one is Nyad about the 60, what was she, 65 when she swam from Cuba to uh, Florida. She had several attempts before she actually uh, was successful. And this movie stars Annette Benning and Jodie Foster. Well, if you're like me, you practically grew up with Jodie Foster. Uh, seeing her first in um, Kung Fu, where she's absolutely adorable. And behind the scenes, everyone loved her, said she was a young adult in a child's body. She's a brilliant actress, always fun to watch, full of uh, grit 
full of uh, always a surprise in her performances. So I love following Jodi's career. But also what's really, really special about this movie is that you often hear that women say you were done as an actor or television person after 50 years old. And these two women are over 50. In fact, there's a lot of people in the movie that are over 50. And what a pleasure to see a movie with such strong, beautiful acting, really a lot of dedication. Annette Bending is phenomenal in it, and so is Jodie Foster. You fall in love with them right away. It's really something you should see. I don't want to spoil it for you. I get tired of people spoiling for you. And this enveloping and, and unfolding before you is half of the fun, isn't it? So I just wanted to pop in here and tell you about these two films. Hopefully you'll get to go see them because often I talk about Disney films and fantasy films, you know, and science fiction films and stuff like that. That is stuff that I like. But these two films aren't anywhere near there. And uh, they're really, really excellent. Now, the color purple is a different telling of a movie that was shot by surprisingly enough, Steve, Steven Spielberg uh, did the first one. So now we got the second one and I um, hope I got that right. And uh, uh, it's very, very different. It's very, very different. Unlike West Side Story, where I was pretty much bored to tears because it was the same telling of a movie that was really, really good back in the day. Why tell it again? Same when I saw Psycho. Why I didn't see the second version because it was a tracing. I don't really want to watch people trace. I want to watch people create. I don't know how you feel, but this is my personal opinion. And I believe The Color Purple does that. It has a lot more energy. Well, I mean, it's told as a musical. So you know that just when certain things are going to be really dark, which the first one has some very dark stuff in the story, that because it's a musical, it lightens it up because people are singing and that is the natural effect of a musical is that even if it's a really hard thing to get through, it pops up and you sort of get it softened by the nice, uh, by the uh, fact that it's singing. So uh, I highly recommend it. And before I go, I would like to tell you that this weekend we're supposed to get rain, but it looks like we're being smiled upon and Sunday's going to be a window of dryness. Why do I tell you this? Because there's a wonderful place at Griffith Park in Southern California. Griffith Park being a place of travel town. Uh, they used to have pony rides and uh, stuff like that, but the pony rides are gone. And we have a wonderful, fabulous L.A. zoo here. Anyway, I digress. The thing I'm talking to you about is Walt's Barn, put on by a wonderful group called the Carrollwood Society. It happens the third Sunday of every month. And guess what? This Sunday is the third Sunday of every month. So I'll be there. And surprisingly enough, if you are a collector of fine books, then you'll, re you'll um, remember the name Sam Genoway. Before the pandemic, Sam decided, or maybe it was during the pandemic, Sam decided to do a trek across the United States in a giant van. And he has a Patreon page that you can follow. And he takes pictures of himself and the van as they go across the United States and look at cool stuff and experience cool stuff. And because Sam is a writer, it's very well written and it's a lot of fun to follow. So Sam is in town, meaning down, meaning in Southern California, and he's going to be appearing also. He's coming to see his friends. We're just more casual. It's not like a visually appearing Terry Harden, Sam Genoway, but we're going to be there and we're going to be there. I mean, I can't, I can't really uh, uh, speak for Sam. He might, he may be there the whole time, maybe not, but I will be. So I'll be there the whole day. But what I wanted you to know is that it, if the weather uh, gets really, really bad, like really, really hard rain and Griffith Park has to close, then Walt's Barn will have to do so as well. But if it's a light rain, they've told me they're still going to be open. So bring an umbrella, uh, bring a slicker, bring something so you can be uh, rain warm. And uh, don't forget that Carrollwood Society uh, has a very special thing that happens a little bit before three. That's their closing. They do a flag ceremony with the famous Gunny, the Marine who used to do it at Disneyland for years and then suddenly um, left. Uh, 
under circumstances that are not my story to tell. Uh, but you get a chance to go out there, get to see him, get to experience it and have a really good time. So it's a great place to go. And then I should mention you get to walk through Walt Disney's barn. And it is the actual Disney barn that Walt had filled with things inside that Walt owned or were donated for various reasons. So don't miss it. Come check it out 11 to 3 this Sunday. Google it and you can find it. Okay. All right. That's what I had to say. Sorry, I can't be with you today. I have a lovely weekend, but wanted to just say, uh, I hope your week wasn't filled with Mondays like mine was. And if it was, I hope you got through it like I did. But uh, how exciting about the rain. I just am excited that it looks like Sunday. It's going to give us a little break so that I can see you all. So if you got something, you want to know something to do, this is a great thing to do. Plus, check out a couple of movies that are a little bit different when it comes to things you might want to see. I just want to give a shout out to them. I think Color Purple is very creative and that's what I've been, you know, barking about all the time is please, if you're going to redo a movie, just do it differently. Create something different. And I think they did that here with the Color Purple. Uh, I invite your comments as well. Uh, and if you're just joining me or you're joining me after this, uh, have a lovely weekend. Welcome, 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 and consider subscribing, okay? All right, love you guys. I'll see you on Monday. Take care. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. I hope that wasn't a little crazy. I've been working on a little bit of lighter sleep because I've had this deadline. So I uh, hope it wasn't too wonky. But if it was, I'll get some rest this weekend and we'll talk Monday. Hope I see you Sunday. Take care, everyone. Be well. And